took me a little while to get the camera set up like this, so I'm a little closer than I should be, but I wanted you to be able to see these feathers. What I've got here are two feathers from a pheasant, and one is a tiny little down feather, and this little one was from the body of the, fe of the pheasant, from the chest area. What I wanted you to see on this is the actual contour or the natural curve of the feather. Notice that the shaft that runs right down the center is curved and that's because it has to fit right close to the body. It has to follow the contour of the body. These little tiny light wispy parts are the downy part of the feather that sits close to the body. And this little one sits right inside of that. And that's what traps air and keeps the, the animal or the bird warm. Now you can see the natural markings of that feather. That's the pretty part of the feather that we see sticking out from the, the actual body. All of this is usually hidden underneath another feather because they sit one on top of the other like that. But most importantly, I wanted you to see the curve, a natural curve. A feather never sits flat on the surface like that. Never sits like that because the bird's body isn't as flat. It's not like this. This brings me to talk about the form of the bird or the natural shape. Let's take a look at these smaller feathers. Now these are hugging the body very, very tight. And of course, I would never be able to demonstrate this in real life because I'd never be able to stick a paintbrush underneath the feathers of a bird and get away with it. But I can do that here and show you how the feathers layer. They sit one on top of each other, see? And if I can sneak in, you can see how close they sit to each other, one on top of the other. And if I pass my hand over it, they're very, very streamlined and sleek. And this is what protects the bird's body. Now on the side here, you can see with the light of value uh, or change in color, you can see how the feathers not only lay one on top of each other, but they all follow a specific direction. They grow down the neck and they follow the contour of the body. Notice they follow it. Look at the side here and how they curve around just by the wing and then move back towards the tail. And if we were to divide the chest area, I'll turn this towards the camera. If we were to divide the chest area of the bird, let's see which direction I'm going in here, towards the camera there, and through the center, oh, he's losing some of his filling, but through the center, you'll notice how the feathers grow. These on this side grow towards here, this shoulder or this wing, and the other ones grow this direction towards this wing. And that's very common with all birds. If I pull his body back, you will see that. Divide it visually down the center, but notice they all move this way and they all move that way. Now, it's not as obvious if you just look at the bird at a glance like this, but if you do a close up and you pull in right close, see, you can see how they follow that natural curve all the way through. And let's look at some of the bigger feathers on the side of the bird. Now, this is his wing. And of course, he has been taxidermied, but if I stick my finger underneath there, see, I can separate the wing from the rest of the body. But what you will notice with this wing, if I turn it this way, is the wing also sits against the body, but if you look at the shape of my hand to the shape of the wing, you'll notice that it too follows the curve of a cylinder. The wing sits 
over the top of a cylinder. So it takes on that rounded and shape. It back. And you can see that whole row of feathers, but when it lays down flat, it's very streamlined and sleek. Again, if this feather here, this is the one loose feather, see it's sitting curved. Remember I said the shaft is definitely curved, follows that natural contour of the body. And if I was to pick up the feather and place it on the bird, it would follow the natural contour of the bird. It would curve in towards the bird's body. So the shaft must always curve in towards the body, never outward. You won't see a feather growing like that. If it is growing like that, the bird is just about to lose the feather because he hasn't finished preening. Something went wrong, see, like that, and that looks very unnatural. So what we would make sure is that as we paint our feathers, we always paint them curved. See, I can just slide that in very delicately, and look at how it blends in beautifully. Well, not quite beautifully, but it follows a natural curve. I'll do that one more time so you can see. Here's our little stray feather. If it goes in the wrong direction, it sticks out away from the body. But if I curve it around, I can poke it in like that, and it will fit with the natural contour of the body because it's curved to follow. Just pull it back out. And then we'll talk about the back of the neck. Now notice the feathers as they grow back towards the, the back of the tail. I'll hold this up so you can see. So this would be the tail here towards the camera. This would be the tail. Now all these feathers on the back grow in the same pattern. Remember in the front they came around towards the wings. Well in the back the same thing happens. They fall down and they always move in the direction towards the bird's tail. Again, following the natural contour all the way back. The wings on the sides, here are the wings. This one is about ready to fall out, but there's the wing, which is tucking back in, and there's the other wing. These feathers, as they grow towards the top of the head, are very short feathers, tiny, tiny little feathers, and they hug the natural shape of the bird's head. So they're usually very close to the body, and we don't usually paint a lot of detail on these feathers because they're so short. Same with around the neck. Of course, it depends on the species of bird, but for this guy, which is pretty standard. You can see the differences on the different types of feathers. So nice little short feathers that follow the natural contour. And for those of you who've done the Traditions Education Program, this is the pheasant that I used as my, my model for when I painted one of the lessons. And you can see the tail feather on this guy is extremely long. It's quite beautiful the markings. And the shaft that's running down the center is quite prominent. And then when we look at the web on the side, you can see, I'll hold it up there, you can see the torn edges along, which is very decorative to this particular bird. All these little fine edges. And when the bird is ready to fly, he makes sure that his feathers are in really good shape so that they act like the wings of a plane. They, they can, um, you know, the air can glide over and under them and uh, assist with flight. So here we have the longer flight feathers on the wings, but again, following the natural contour of the bird. Underneath the bird, we usually have more downy, fluffier feathers. And even with tropical birds, you'll notice with the, um, the parrots, 
they usually have the fluffier, finer feathers um, down towards the lower part of their body and then at the top of their legs. Of course, a pheasant has much longer legs like a chicken. It's, you know, a fowl. I think it's a fowl. Yeah. And, uh, you know, longer legs. And then, of course, the back end here, you've got the finer feathers, which then end up all being tapered towards the tail. So a bird's body is usually quite um, consistent or standard. We've got this cylindrical shape, which makes up the mass of the bird. Feathers all conform to the shape of the bird and the shape of the bird's head. So I hope this explained it a little easier to you and um, you'll understand when I'm pointing out the direction or the growth pattern of the bird's feathers that this is what happened. They grow from, you know, the neck area and they conform to the natural shape of the bird's body.